Well, hey everybody, I'm Dr. Mark Atala, uh, and broadcasting to you from the conference room that's uh, uh, next to my office and across from my lab. And today we're going to talk about, this is actually going to be a short lecture on small end designs. Small end designs are a type of within subjects, within groups design. And they were pioneered by B.F. Skinner, who you may or may not have heard of before. Skinner was interested in these because he was interested in behavior modification research. Or behavior mod. I don't have to try to spell modification. But this is where you try to change behavior and uh, you're not using 50 or 100 people for this study. You're usually trying to change the behavior of one person uh, at a time. And so uh, he initially had problems getting published, actually. That's one of the reasons he had to create his own journals. Uh, because they, he didn't have the ends um, that people wanted to see for statistical work. So he kind of had to make up, start making up his own st uh, types of statistics for this stuff, too. What would be an example of a uh, small end design? Well, the simplest type of small end design is what's called an A, B, A design, okay? And let's say uh, we're using this as a behavior modification study with a child who um, is in the autism spectrum, and let's say they're doing self-destructive behaviors, like they're biting themselves. Um, let's just go with that. They're biting themselves, uh, doing self-stimulation. What the A condition is, is the baseline condition. So we want some estimate of how many times an hour, let's say, that they're biting themselves. And let's say that's 10 times per hour, because I always think in terms of 10, the decimal system. Um, is that decimals? Yeah, I guess so. Who knows? What B is, is the introduction of the independent variable. And uh, this could be, this is essentially the treatment, uh, whatever it is that you're, you think might be effective. And a common thing that's used with children in the autism spectrum is distraction. So the person who's working with them, when they see this self-destructive behavior, they distract them with a toy or uh, trying to um, get them to work on something else. Or, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different types of distraction that you could do. And then we measure how often the behavior of interest is occurring. And let's say it's a, we're able to drop it down to zero times per hour. So we're able to uh, have it where they're not biting themselves at all. The, the last A here is a return to the baseline. And in this case, what we do is we eliminate the, um, we get rid of the, the independent variable, we get rid of distraction, and we see if the child goes back to biting themselves again. And this is, this is one of the issues with small end designs, is that there's ethical issues of ever returning people to the baseline, um, and so that they often come, become what are A-B designs, because if we know that the intervention's working, then we don't bother uh, returning to people to the baseline. And the point of this is to get people to, um, yeah, to stop uh, the behavior that they were doing that was destructive. A type of, or another example of ABA designs are what are called natural treatments, okay? And natural treatments are used this is when essentially some reality or some higher being, depending on your beliefs, uh, essentially creates their own experiment. And so, uh, for example, uh, we will skip over current events and instead talk about uh, like floods. Okay, floods tend to be very traumatic for people because everything gets destroyed and. Uh, you can't move back into your house because it gets into the drywall, and so you have to rip out all that stuff, too. So uh, you could look at utilization rates of um, um, for mental health care. 
Well, I'll, I'll write it out. Because there's community mental health, and so people come in uh, when they're having uh, going through difficult times. Um, so let's say there's 100 clients per month on average. And then the B is the flood, okay? So when the flood comes through, the utilization rate for mental health services goes way up. So let's say to 1,000 um, uh, visits per month. And then a year later, uh, you're back to its return to the baseline. And so you're back to 100 times per month. And <clears throat> this is valuable because it allows um, community mental health agencies to determine how much they have to essentially ramp up um, uh, their delivery of services. Uh, it doesn't have to be floods or anything like that, though. Uh, you can think of this, and you can ask your parents and grandparents about this, too, is uh, dentistry, modern dentistry, is a wonderful thing. But uh, our initial baseline, let's say, of cavities, your grandparents probably had cavities. Probably a number of you have never had a cavity, or maybe you've had one or two, and that's because of fluoride. Um, that is the, um, the intervention, the natural treatment that was made. Um, putting fluoride in toothpaste, putting fluoride in water, and uh, what that did was it massively cut down the number of calories, cavities, calories that people had. So if on average people used to have five cavities or more, fluoride dropped them to one or two. We've never bothered to return to the baseline because again, it's, it's perhaps unethical to, uh, if we know that fluoride works in terms of uh, tooth decay and preventing it, then why would you ever go back to a time uh, before that? So, uh, and there's, there's other examples of this, but I think you get the general idea. Uh, let's talk about this, though, because this is one of the problems, like I said, um, is there's ethics involved in small end designs that you don't run into in other within subjects designs. If you know that fluoride cures cavities, then why would you put people into a condition where, you know, let's keep, let's keep a test group of, of kids who aren't exposed to fluoride to see if they get a bunch of cavities. You could never do that study. And so that's one of the problems. Um, and the other is pretty much the same thing that we talked about uh, in the other video, which is um, uh, if you can't reverse whatever it is that you do, then you have to run it as a between subjects, between groups design. So, um, you know, if you gave, if you, well, I go back to the lobotomy issue again, too. So, um, yeah, that would be a, a treatment that you could do, but you can't return people to the baseline at that point. So, small end designs, uh, powerful in behavior modification, uh, which is other, uh, an interesting class that you might take too, but pretty limited in the number of applications um, in terms of experimental design. So that's what I want to talk about for today. I hope you're having a great day wherever you are, and I'll talk to you again soon.